Okay, so today we are going to talk about four things I hate about the SIG Cross. Do you believe it? No, of course not. This is an awesome rifle. I am extremely happy with this thing, and I'm going to be doing some more videos on this in the future showing what you can do with this gun. But it's fantastic. However, I do have four little issues with it that I want to go ahead and address. One of them is just a quibble, and three of them are irritation. So let's talk about that. So first of all, the weight. When this rifle first came out back in 2020, SIG put out a press release talking about another model they were going to have called the Brooks Range Edition. And it was supposed to have a carbon fiber barrel and drop another pound off of the weight. Well, the long range community looks at this and says, well, man, that is such a lightweight gun. And it comes in right around seven pounds, just under seven pounds, they claim. But by the time you add a scope and a suppressor, you're getting up there. You really are. And it could honestly lose about a pound and, and I'd be fairly happy with that. Yes, you can get an aftermarket barrel, but those are very expensive. You're looking another $1,000 to add a carbon fiber barrel. If it came with it from the factory, <laughs> I really would have preferred that, but it didn't, so that's a quibble. Now, let's get into th three things now that could be a little better on this gun. And I'm not even talking about the safety. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos talking about the safety, and I think you guys are missing the point. So, this rifle, that safety, that's fire, and halfway in between the two is a little detent. It's still on safe. And a lot of people say, well, that's not safe. That's, that's not on full safe. Well, yeah, it is. That's the safety. That's also the safety. The guys from SIG haven't admitted this, but I am pretty sure I know why this exists. The original SIG Cross did not have that, but they had a recall. And when the rifles came back from the recall, they had this extra detent in the safety. I'm pretty sure it's just there so that you can tell at a quick glance whether or not the gun has gone through the recall or not. That makes sense to me. That's a safety. It's just a shorter throw to turn it off. So big deal. All right, so let's get to the things that actually do matter. Number one, the trigger. The trigger on this thing is actually really good. It's not great. A great trigger has three things going for it. it the, the three aspects of a great trigger are creep, let off, and over travel. Let's talk about that. This is a two-stage trigger. It has take up. That's not creep. That is supposed to be there. You hit that wall, and then you start paying attention to creep. And there's not a lot of it. That's a really good trigger in terms of creep. It's also a good trigger in terms of weight. You can adjust this down to two and a half pounds. Well, with the two-stage trigger, that's about one pound. So you only have another pound and a half of weight before that goes. But did you see what happened there on the over-travel? As you pull it, let me do this as carefully as I can. That's a lot of movement after the sear trips. That's a problem because the bullet is right now in the barrel, heading down the barrel to leave the gun, and that trigger is still moving. That means that you are adding influence to the rifle while the bullet is still in the barrel. It's not much, but it is something. Let me contrast that with the Steyr Scout Rifle. So this is also a two-stage trigger, but watch what happens when this one goes off. It doesn't move. There's no movement after the, after the gun goes off. That's a great trigger. <laughs> that is a great trigger. So... An adjustment to the over-travel would really benefit this SIG Cross. Okay, next two things. Mag release. The mag release is right here. You poke at it with your index finger. If you're in a class, a practical rifle class, 
you will injure your finger by the end of the class. That's a very heavy spring. It needs to be to retain the, the magazine. But there, I found an aftermarket part that actually extends down underneath the, the rifle, makes it a lot easier to, to push it. That would be awesome. Uh, they have other models. The, uh, the target models have a release on the outside. That would help. That would give you more leverage. Like I said, not a huge deal, but it is an irritation. Last thing that's an irritation, this bolt handle. Now, it's got all these ridges in it. Those are not for your comfort. Trust me. If you are just at a range and you're at the shooting bench and you're just, you know, slowly and calmly working the gun, it's fine. It's not a big deal. But if you're taking a scout rifle or practical rifle class or you're doing some serious training with this thing, you're going to wear out your your thumb and for and uh, finger because that those grooves are just going to catch they're unnecessary a smooth bolt handle of the same size as this would be perfect uh badger makes one i'm going to be getting one it just it it drives me absolutely nuts so it's just three irritations the over travel the mag release and the uh, the textured bolt knob. Those three things are about the only criticisms I have of this rifle. Other than that, like I said, it is just, it's an amazing rifle and I'm having a great time with it. I'm having a great time learning it and I'm learning to really appreciate everything else that this rifle has. So if you're interested in this journey of, you know, working out with a with a general purpose rifle, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and thank you for watching. Oh, one last addendum. Sorry for the clickbait in the title.